Imagine waking up tomorrow and the internet is completely gone. No emails, no social media, no streaming, not even a way to check your bank account. Sounds like a nightmare, right? Well, the internet and everything you rely on daily exists because of one thing, networks. But what exactly is a network and why is it so crucial? If you're studying for the CCNA or just diving into the world of networking, stick around because today we're breaking it all down from the ground up. At its core, a network is a group of devices or nodes that are connected to share data and resources. These devices include computers, servers, smartphones, printers, networking hardware like switches and routers. The goal? Efficient communication. But how does this communication happen? Well, through a combination of hardware and software working together to transmit data. Beautiful, beautiful data. Every time you browse the internet, stream a video, or send an email, you're using a network. To understand how networks function, let's talk about the key components in a little more detail. You have your end devices, your end user devices. These are the devices that generate and receive data like PCs, phones, or IoT devices. Each of these devices have unique IP addresses for identification. Then you have your intermediary devices. These include routers, switches, and firewalls. Routers connect different networks and direct traffic while switches manage data flow within a network. Firewalls add security by filtering traffic. Next is your media. This refers to the physical or wireless means through which data is transmitted. Ethernet cables and fiber optic provide wired connections, while Wi-Fi allows for wireless connectivity. The choice of media impacts speed and reliability. Not all networks are the same. Depending on their size and scope, we classify them into different types, each with its specific purpose. A LAN or local area network is a network confined to a small location. You'll often find these in homes, schools, and offices. It's usually fast and secure because it's controlled within a limited area. A WAN, a wide area network, is a larger network that spans cities or even countries like, like the internet. It's the internet. It's the World Wide Web. This type requires extensive infrastructure, often managed by ISPs. You're watching this video because you are connected through an ISP. You've got the WLAN, the wireless LAN, a wireless version of a LAN using Wi-Fi instead of cables. This is common in homes and offices where mobility is needed. A MAN, Metropolitan Area Network. A network covering a city or a large campus is larger than a LAN, but smaller than a WAN, often used by businesses and governments. Think of it as a medium area network. I'm coining that term, it's mine. I, I never heard it before, but it's mine. Then you have your topologies, right? Your topology refers to how devices in a network are arranged and connected. Choosing the right topology affects efficiency, fault tolerance, and scalability. Some of the uh, common ones we'll go over real quick right now. First one up is a bus. All devices share a single communication line. It's simple, but can slow down as more devices are connected. Now you won't see that too often, but you might still see it, maybe. A star topology is uh, where devices are connected to central switch or router. This is common in modern networks due to its reliability. Then you have your mesh. Mesh networks or mesh topologies are devices interconnected, creating multiple paths for redundancy. It's highly fault tolerant, but it can be a bit more expensive. Then you have your hybrids. All right, you're going to see this a lot more often in the wild, which is a mix of multiple topologies used to optimize performance and scalability. Most enterprise networks do use the hybrid designs. To ensure devices communicate effectively and efficiently, networks use protocols, rules that define how data is transmitted. Let's talk about some of the key ones you'll find on the CCNA. You have your TCP IP, which is the backbone of the internet, ensuring reliable communication between devices. You have your ethernet, the most common LAN technology defining how data packets are structured and transmitted. And you have your Wi-Fi, your 802.11, a set of network standards for a wireless technology, allowing devices to connect without cables. And don't forget the OSI model. It's a conceptual framework that breaks Networking into seven layers, each with specific functions, and we're gonna run over, run through those real quick. So first up, you have your physical layer, which is cables, switches, and radio frequencies. Your number two is a data link layer, which is your MAC addresses and ethernet. 
Then your number three, which is your network layer, routing and IP addressing. Number four is your transport layer, TCP and UDP. Number five, well, that's your session layer, managing sessions between devices. Layer six is your presentation layer, which is your data encryption and formatting. And number seven is your application layer, which is web browsers and email protocols. Understanding the OSI model will help you troubleshoot and design better networks. Networking is the backbone of modern communication, powering businesses, hospitals, financial institutions, and even entertainment platforms like YouTube. Without networks, cloud computing, remote work, and online services wouldn't exist. As an aspiring network engineer, you'll play a vital role in designing, maintaining, and securing these networks. Mastering networking concepts will open doors to careers in IT, cybersecurity, and cloud computing. So whether you're troubleshooting a home router or configuring enterprise level systems, networking is an essential skill. So now you know what a network is, how it works, and why it's so important. If you found this helpful, make sure you like and subscribe for more CCNA content. I have more in the pipeline and it'll be coming up. I'm going to be more consistent this year, I promise. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please drop them in the comment section. I, I read all of them. I try to reply to as many as I can, and I'll be happy to help as much as I can. It, you might even give, give me inspiration for my next video. And until next time, keep studying, keep building, and keep networking. Have a good one.